you ready for this one? A Nymphoid Barbarian in Dinosaur Hell, also known as Dark Fortress. And this is written and directed by Brett Piper. And it's a 1990 low budget science fiction fantasy movie put out by Troma. Now it's important to note this movie was put out by Troma, but it wasn't actually produced by them. It was picked up by them and distributed, but it's not originally a Troma movie. However, the Troma release, they added a little bit of extra footage at the beginning with a kind of a voiceover um, and gave it this kind of uh, this title that it's now known as. So what is the story? Well, it focuses on a kind of point in the future at some, at some distance in the future where there has been some type of nuclear war and it's essentially wiped out the human race outside of a few survivors and the survivors that they're having have kind of started from zero almost having like a kind of stone age kind of mentality and uh, in this new age we have various kind of mutants uh, monsters warlords and things like this and it focuses on two barbarians i guess uh, a, a male and a female one and um they're together at the beginning of the movie but they run afoul of this warlord and his kind of lizard men and ultimately kind of get separated both of them kind of make uh, uh, their own separate ally and ultimately have to try and defeat this warlord. Along the way, there's various kind of bandits and monsters and creatures and things. What will happen? Well, you will have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what we think works. So the title is a little misleading. It's not quite as uh, spoofy as you might expect. I mean, this, as I said, this was a, a, a title that was given to this film uh, by Troma after it was kind of distributed by them, but it wasn't made as that. Um, so although it's incredibly cheesy, it's kind of played straight, if that makes sense. Uh, what, can, what can we say that works in this movie's favour? Now, we have to bear in mind the budget. We have to bear in mind the age here. But I have to say, there's some amusing and entertaining VFX here. Um, the idea being by Piper, the writer-director here, was to kind of recreate some of the film from the Ray Harryhausen movies by having kind of stop-motion monsters. And, um, you know, they're of a kind of a cheaper version and lower, lower quality, but I still quite enjoyed them, I have to say. And there are plentiful monsters in this film. And they're not all the stop-motion. We get kind of rubber suits, we get kind of puppets and things like that. So we get a good amount of kind of these creatures within the movie and even our kind of like our, um, you know, humanoid kind of bad guys. We have these kind of lizard men. I actually kind of quite like some of the makeup. I mean, again, we have to bear in mind the budget and the time this was made. But I think, for example, the lizard men makeup is actually pretty good. Um, and, I, and I kind of quite like that. And, you know, I, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm a lover of kind of B-movies, so I kind of appreciate the um, the level of craftsmanship, especially in these kind of lower budget, older movies. But you know, it's just easy to kind of kind of knock this movie. But I think you have to kind of uh, look at it with those uh, with those through those glasses, so to speak. Uh, what else can I say? I mean, there's there's some interesting kind of on location shooting. They've clearly found some kind of like ruin type kind of um, um, location shooting where there's kind of like medieval kind of looking kind of. Uh, ruins somewhere and kind of filmed against that so it looks you know basically kind of give it this, this this old world destruction feel and all that which is quite good there's a couple of interesting elements which i quite enjoyed is that you have seen this in a few films here and there where we have this kind of like fantasy setting but it's set in you know it's set in a world which is our world but just decimated and they find remnants like they find like for example a lighter and they're kind of all amazed by it and things and uh, one guy he's got this kind of like a gun and it's like to them it's like this this ultimate weapon so i kind of quite like the interactions with some of the kind of like the the remnants from our contemporary age you know and how they're kind of like all amazed by it again we have seen it uh, you know in uh in sort of media before the Shannara Chronicles was kind of like that, the, the kind of the animated movie Wizards was kind of like that. Um, but I still kind of quite enjoyed it. Um, there's a couple of kind of uh, interesting side characters. Now I mentioned that our, our male and female barbarians both end up getting split up and they both end up kind of getting their own kind of ally. Uh, the guy ends up getting this, this older guy 
who seems to be trying to teach himself about the kind of the history of, of this world and is a little bit more intelligent, is a bit more well read and he's kind of collecting these books and things like that. Um, just to trying to kind of like, uh, you know, keep his kind of, you know, his, his IQ up, I guess, and learn about the, the past and this. I, I found that quite interesting. And then the, the female find this other barbarian guy who's like massively disfigured, um, but he still kind of tries to help her and things. Although he ultimately is killed off more or less straight away, which kind of makes it seem a little pointless, but there you go. But there isn't, that was, you know, there was an interesting idea there, and I think, oh, that, that could have been interesting, rather than the vanilla and, and, quite frankly, generically boring kind of male lead that we actually have. Um, but there was an interesting kind of idea here. But let's, just, let's talk about what doesn't work in this film. I have to say, the music here is distractingly bad. Um, there's some awful music in this movie, which is just... I mean, I'm not a person who could have noticed uh, the scores very much, to be honest with you. I think a, a score can work if it kind of pluses the scene, but sometimes it's better if you almost don't notice it, it's just there. But this was so distractingly bad at times. And in other places, there's no music at all. There's like a prolonged fight sequence on this kind of like um, rock, rocky outcropping where we have this um, like mutant barbarian good guy versus this kind of warlord. And there's no music to it, and it just needed it, to be quite honest with you, because it really lacks that kind of uh, uh, dramatic tension. Partly also because the choreography is so bad. So yes, when we do have kind of fight scenes, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean... It's like people like putting up like a weapon and then the other guy kind of like hitting the weapon, not even trying to go for like a body shot and things like that. So, you know, it's like kids play fighting with sticks. You know, you're not actually aiming to hit someone, you're aiming to hit their weapon and things. So it, it kind of looks a little rubbish. And, you know, it's very slow and deliberate, so people aren't kind of getting themselves hurt. Obviously, we understand there's safety stuff when, they, you know, you're filming stuff like this. But choreography-wise, it's, it's not good. Um, the biggest issue, however, with this movie is there's nearly no dialogue in it. I mean, ap apparently, from what I was reading, uh, Piper, who was the writer-director here, was advised to have little to no dialogue in the movie so it could be sold better uh, overseas. Um, but apparently, when he went to sell it to Troma, they were going, oh, there's not much dialogue here. And, you know, so it ends up being... Um, there was a little bit of dialogue, and I th although I think some of it might have been added in post because it looks like it's just voiceover. But there's not a huge amount of dialogue in it, and it's very um, just kind of people walking around the woods, if we're being honest. It's, it's kind of not all that interesting. And even without dialogue, you can give a, a you know, a, um, a character some backstory, some, some kind of like motivations. You can convey that. Clown of the Cave Bear with Daryl Hannah, for example, didn't really have any dialogue, and that's probably um, does a better job of it than this. Um, but yeah, so we, we don't even know really the relationship between these kind of male and female barbarians, to be honest with you. I wasn't sure if they were strangers or kind of they had sort of, you know, uh, known each other for a while. It wasn't even really clear when the movie kind of starts. I mean, I have had, I had this movie on VHS, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, so yeah, there's, the dialogue is sparse, um, when we do have dialogue, I mean, it's not, it isn't brilliant, let me just say that, um, but it ends up becoming a little boring, if you're being honest, because you're just getting two, two characters walking around the woods with no dialogue and no kind of, like, frame of reference about who they are and, you know, their relationship to each other and things like that, and you just kind of, like, have badly choreographed fight scenes and stuff like this, um, it ends up being very much of nothing. And like I've said, I think ideas that they they do touch upon, it seemed to be weighted like this, this kind of like this, uh, this disfigured kind of like ally that they find. They find him, you know, and he gets killed. Uh, he would have been a much, in much more interesting, I, I think, um, character than our, as I say, our main guy that we actually have. But he's handsome, so he's got to be the, the hero. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, there's not a lot to this film, if we're being honest. Yeah, and yeah, let's be critical. <clears throat> the effects aren't brilliant, even for its time. I can still appreciate them. I think there's a lot of variety. I think there's a lot of artistic kind of like, 
uh, merit that has to go into that because it, obviously they did work on such a small budget and I enjoyed those sequences but the, 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 the movie around it isn't, isn't brilliant it's just kind of like really no story with kind of very little, little or zero developed kind of characters that are actually kind of quite um, dull and don't be fooled by the title this, this, this makes it sound like it's going to be some kind of like sexy kind of um, you know kinky film it isn't at all really just a girl I mean, it's no more kinky than one million be years bc you know it's kind of just a a woman running around in a bikini she's you know i i i call her a barbarian but she's a damsel in distress at the end of the day she doesn't really do have much kind of like overall impact on the plot I kind of are the the men really are the ones that who are really the the characters that kind of drive what story there is forward so you know it's a, it's a fun film, I think, to watch the kind of quite fun effects. I quite like some of the kind of the monster effects. Um, but and, there, and there's like hints of what could have been an interesting story, but it's certainly not as zany as your kind of like your actually produced kind of trauma movies. Um, and it doesn't kind of like hold any water compared to, I think, other kind of fantasy films. But it's an interest. It's probably not as terrible as you think. Is the best way I would describe it. I'll give it a four out of ten. It's not a good movie, but I, I, I think if you like kind of like low budget creature effects, there is a little bit to enjoy here. Four out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.